Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again on, on our bi-weekly Department of Labor update webinars. I'm Joe Corio, Senior Vice President of URL Insurance Group, and I'd like to thank everyone for being on the uh, webinar with us today. And I would also like to thank everyone for your continued business and support. Because of all your efforts, URL will have one of their best years ever as far as annuity business, and we know without your support that would not be possible. We will do our best to earn your business in 2017 and beyond, and quite frankly, that is one of the reasons we're conducting these webinars, to keep you informed on what's happening, because the DOL fiduciary rule will, will affect you and your annuity business starting in April of 2017. Okay, let's uh, quickly review what is happening on the legal front of the DOL rule. There were some news last week. Unfortunately, it was not great news. On Friday, we were told that a federal appeals court rejected NAFA's request to postpone the implementation deadline for the Department of Labor fiduciary rule. NAFA is the National Association of Fixed Annuities, which happens to be an organization that URL is proud to be a member of. The court concluded that NAFA did not satisfy the stringent requirements for an injunction pending appeal. Uh, NAFA had previously filed to have the rule delayed until they had the opportunity to have their uh, appeal hearing heard. NAFA claimed that the rule is unworkable and it threatens to jeopardize the future of American retirement. Well, despite the news announced by the appeals court last week, NAFA has indicated that they will continue to fight the rule for its members. Also, a few weeks back, late in November, a federal judge in Kansas rejected a request from Market Synergy Group. Uh, Market Synergy Group is an insurance agency in Kansas. Uh, they, were, uh, they had received a rejection for their preliminary injunction to block the DOL fiduciary rule. So basically, this was the second legal victory for the DOL rule. And we're still waiting to hear a judge's decision on another court case that was heard, uh, that being the case in Texas that took place several weeks ago. We're hoping that there'll be a verdict in that case before the end of the year as, as they were anticipating having something uh, already. So, of course, we will keep you posted on any news that comes from the legal battles of the DOL fiduciary rule. There's still, I think, two or three that are still pending, and we'll keep you updated on that as we hear, as we hear uh, news. Other than legal news, uh, it's going to be a short webinar today. There's not that much happening out there with the DOL situation at this time. The department has not released any new information or updates nor have they defined the financial institution requirements as they said that they would. So we're still waiting for a lot of information to come out from the DOL. I do, not want, uh, I do want to report on a meeting that I attended last week in Iowa. It was a DOL prep meeting that was made up of representatives from various FMOs along with home office representatives from eight different carriers all of which they, uh, we represent. The carriers had a mix of marketing people there and attorneys, and we, what we did was we walked through some of the challenges that enactment of the rule will impose on both the carriers and the marketing companies. There are many changes that will be coming. However, I think we all agreed uh, as a group uh, that we can work the changes in gradually so that we do not keep anyone from continuing to make a living from annuity sales. Now, I've mentioned to you in every webinar that we have done, and I believe this is the fourth one, uh, on every webinar on the DOL, that documentation will play an important role in proposing, selling, and writing annuity business, especially qualified business, come post-DOL. Well, this thought was definitely confirmed at my meeting, and in addition, we discussed the process of submitting business. 
you know, with all the documentation, the disclosures, and the best interest contracts that may be necessary to uh, accompany the normal annuity carrier's paperwork, it's very possible that going forward an application could be anywhere between 50 and 100 pages long. And we all know that's a lot of paperwork. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that within a very short period of time, electronic applications will probably be the only means of submitting annuity business. Again, if that's not your bag, don't panic. You know, paper apps will be available in certain in instances, especially in the early days of the DOL implementation. But I promise you, it won't be too long before electronic submission is, is probably the only way that we can continue to do annuity business. There's just going to be too much paperwork, especially on the qualified index side. And actually, with the systems that they're talking about offering, uh, electronic might be a good way of going, because what it's going to do, it's going to help you with the front end portion of picking the right product for your client and filtering through all the, the products and then writing the case. So it's all kind of going to be integrated. So in the long run, it might be a lot easier uh, than doing a paper application. Okay, another area of discussion, especially from the carrier's point of view, was that of uh, product availability, what it would look like going forward. I was happy to hear that most of the carriers felt that their current product line will continue to be offered. They may tweak a few things or pull a few of the unpopular products, but I believe most of the products will still be available. Again, I said most, not all. Uh, I believe that some of the products with the longer surrender charge periods may have to be uh, reevaluated, but it was good to hear that most of the products are still going to be available in their current form. The compensation is still a huge topic of discussion with no firm commitment as to what compensation will be at this point. The DOL rule states that compensation must be reasonable. Well, reasonable is a pretty broad definition, and companies are looking at various different scenarios. Uh, and they were very open with us when we talked with them last week. For instance, some of the conversations were about a set commission rate per product class. For instance, maybe a 10-year fixed annuities would pay one commission percentage, and seven-year fixed indexed annuities would pay another commission percentage, and et cetera, et cetera. Again, nothing has been decided, and the car carriers are definitely open to hearing our recommendations, uh, but really we're still waiting on that, and it'll probably be a couple of months before you know the companies decide what they want to do there. URL's marketing partner, Broker International, along with 18 other marketing companies, are still waiting to hear what the exact requirements will be for them to become a financial institution. The DOL has hinted uh, that they will be announcing guidelines that will be required to be met in order to be a financial institution, and then any organization can become a financial institution. This was a little different than originally announced. Originally, they said, you know, you have to apply, not even knowing what you're applying for. And there was 19 FMOs that did that. And at first, they said they were going to cut it off there. And now they're just hinting that maybe we'll just throw out the requirements. And if you can uh, meet the requirements, then, then you can be a financial institution, should you care to be. Uh, I can assure you that URL and our partners will be prepared to do business come April 2017. In fact, uh, I was very happy to hear the, from the carrier representatives at our meeting last week. Uh, they made it a lot of comments that we were one of the most prepared to enact the DOL uh, than all the FMOs that they have worked with. There are a lot of things that we already have in place. There's a lot of ideas that we're working on. So uh, I, I, granted, there's still so much work that has to be uh, completed, um, but uh, we are on the right track. And I was glad to hear the companies compliment us, uh, us on that. I can tell you for sure the annuity business will change. For you, writing fixed index annuities in the qualified market will be a lot like having a fixed broker-dealer. 
uh, compliance and documentation will be mandatory and your work will need to be reviewed and even approved by the financial institution even before it gets to the home office. So that being said, I can assure you that URL will be ready to assist you uh, to write business as your financial institution come April of 2017. As we continue to gather ideas and work with the carriers so that we are ready to continue to do a annuity business, I can strongly suggest that as of today, it's business as usual. Uh, we appreciate your business. Keep writing the annuity business from now up through April as if nothing is changing. The interest rate environment is really on your side right now. With the recent increase in the Fed rate uh, la announced last week, we have already seen an increase in caps and rates from a few companies. Equitrust, for instance, has announced significant increases from a quarter to a half a point in some cases. So it's really a great time to write fixed uh, annuity business, especially the indexed. So with that said, I'd just like to wrap up. And again, we appreciate all your production. Please keep it coming to start 17 off strong. And I wish all of you a safe and happy holiday season. And I'll talk to you two weeks from today. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.